On the darkest nights of the year, at the end of December, we celebrate the holiday of lights, Hanukkah. For eight consecutive nights, Jews around the world gather in their homes with family and friends and light a Hanukkiah, more popularly known as a menorah, an eight-branched candelabra. Starting with one light on the first night, we add one additional light each night until on the eighth night, the light of a fully lit menorah permeates our homes and banishes the darkness outside. Hanukkah, which means rededication, is the story of a small band of heroes, the Maccabees, led by Judah, who in the 160s before the Common Era defeated the great Syrian Greek army of Antiochus and rededicated the Holy Temple in Jerusalem, which Antiochus had defiled. A few hundred years after the Maccabees' victory, the story was told that when it came time for Judah to light the menorah in the temple, there was only enough oil to last for one day. But Judah lit the menorah, and miraculously the oil lasted for eight days until new oil could be pressed. And in celebration of this miracle of the oil, to this day we light candles and celebrate for eight nights. Now, obviously oil enough for just one day doesn't last eight days, so why 2,000 years later are we still lighting the lights to remember this miracle story? Perhaps because the lights of Hanukkah come to remind us of one of the most important truths in life. That no matter how dark things are, there's always hope. That even if we're down to our last drop of oil, our last ounce of energy, there's always possibility. If like Judah Maccabee, we're willing to act, if we're willing to light that last candle, to take that one step, even though we are so afraid to engage in that one act of kindness even though it seems as if it won't make any difference at all. I remember when I visited New Orleans a couple of months after Hurricane Katrina and learned this truth from ordinary heroes. I spoke at a gathering of about a thousand people who had come to feel some sense of solidarity and hope. Traveling through New Orleans and seeing the devastation was beyond humbling. It felt literally the darkness had won out and blown out all the light in the city. Rather than begin with my speech, which could not possibly have matched what the people gathered, felt, and knew about life, I decided to start with the wisdom of Hanukkah. I simply asked people to think about where they had located any signs of hope and light in the midst of the tragedy of Katrina, and to share them as these were the holy sparks from which hope and life and connection would be rekindled. What ensued was one of the most remarkable experiences of my life. One person after another rose to tell a story of the first signs of hope they felt. A mother who felt hope the first time after weeks that she could cook something hot for her children. <laughs> The person who knew things were going to be okay. The first time a traffic light on her corner started working. The young man who remembered laughing for the first time when a friend told him a joke. The parents who lost all their possessions, who after two months were given a single book from which to read their children a good night story. Then there were stories of small kindnesses received and offered, a smile, a ride, a shared sandwich, shared clothing, a hug. Each kindness described as a turning point and evoking sighs of recognition and tears of hope. In New Orleans that evening, I learned the truth of Hanukkah from ordinary heroes, willing in the darkest times to light one candle and believe that light would indeed swallow up the darkness and that despair would in the end be defeated by hope.